in the last stream, we were working on upgrading our ore processing system to allow us to produce more ingots per resource ore that we are producing with our miners and also to get more gems, of course, with the ores that we're producing from our lapis, coal, and redstone miners. And I think the very first thing that we probably need to do in today's stream is upgrade this setup. Between streams, I did take a bunch of these ores out and just manually run them through the jumbo furnace just to clear out some of the backlog because we were very close to items spewing all over the place, which would not have been great. So I think the first thing we'll do here is potentially get like four more induction furnaces, take us up to five, and I guess potentially four more pulverizers as well. I don't think we necessarily need as many pulverizers as we do induction furnaces, but I think it is going to look nicer if we have a symmetrical amount of both. And then once we've got that taken care of, my main plan for today's episode is to use this new area of the base over here to hopefully automate the production of the first two tiers of Technium Ingot. Now that we have, or once we have, I should say, the better our processing up and running, we should be getting a decent number of materials, and we should have enough materials to, for example, automate the production of bronze. We're already automating the production of clay. We're already automating the production of smooth stone. And of course, we're going to get more lapis, 36 times more lapis, with the new pulverizer system. And so if we can just automate treated wood and cold cook, it will make automating the basic Technium here super easy. The advanced Technium after that is going to be a tiny bit trickier, but I don't think it should be too difficult. The hardest bit really is going to be the automation of gears because my plan initially was going to be to get the multi-server press here and use that to make gears because it's faster than the metal press. However, in order to make gears using the multi-server press, you also need a gear working die. And unfortunately, in this pack, the gear working die requires a diamond gear and diamonds are not yet unlocked. If we want to get diamonds, we have to go all the way down to ultimate tech and we need at least four of these ruby blocks. We do thankfully only need advanced technium and not the um, the next tier, the elite technium. And so the diamonds are not actually that far away because we only have to complete a few more quests in the crystal section before we start getting access to rubies. And so it's possible we could look at getting the multi-server press sooner rather than later. Either way though, let's head back over here. Let me quickly whip up some more machine frames. If we're gonna get, I guess, eight more machine frames, we need at least eight more Electrum gears and a bunch of silver and some glass. Glass we have, silver we've got a ton of. You'll see we're doing quite well on ingots now because the system has been chucking away and I have been periodically refilling these uh, lapidary dynamos with lapis to keep the induction smelter going um, as fast as it can. Obviously it's not fast enough, but that is fine. Also, I did realize between streams that I made a uh, little mistake with this lapidary dynamo in that I placed it directly above this rapid hopper here so that whenever we put anything into this dynamo, it just gets pulled out instantly and pumped back into our system, which is not ideal and definitely needs to be fixed. But basically over here, we can uh, quickly swap our metal press plate for our gear plate. And then of course we can drop in this full stack of Electrum. We've got more cooking over in the alloy kiln. I did also get an interesting suggestion in the Twitch chat that we could potentially swap out eating baked potatoes for eating golden carrots, which is definitely more expensive on the gold front, but they have a substantially higher amount of saturation. And we do have unlimited gold coming in from this production system. And so if we can get carrots somewhat easily, which we can because you can just craft potatoes into carrots, which I might actually just do like this and then throw a carrot in there, we could then swap this draw out for another draw for carrots. And then we could slowly start to back up on those and then use those with gold to hopefully get golden carrots, which we could then eat as potentially a superior food source to the baked potatoes. Either way, that is a problem for future Isaac. For now, we'll probably stick to the baked potatoes, at least not until we have a, a decent backlog of golden carrots. But uh, over here, let's see if we can't get eight more machine frames. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Fantastic. And then from there, we want to get four more induction smelters, which should be fairly straightforward. I'm fairly certain we're going to have what it takes to make four more blast furnaces. We totally do. And then uh, we also have what it takes to make a bunch of these. I'm going to make a stack of redstone flux coils because I think we're going to need a lot of them in the pack. We do then need to get eight more Invar gears, which we definitely do not have currently. That is fine. We do have the Invar to make that happen. And then as for the pulverizers here, we need copper gears. Again, I'll take a full stack of copper. Maybe not actually. We 
don't have that much copper, I will take uh, exactly the amount needed, and then flint we should have from before. Pistons, I will go ahead and make a, as many of these as I can, which apparently is eight. I'm going to make more of those, again, just so that we don't have to keep manually crafting them over and over again every time we need them. Fantastic. And uh, once we have the invar gears and the copper gears, we should be good to get these machines down. And the only tricky part then is going to be distributing the ores to all of the induction smelters, which I think should be possible if we set up a conveyor belt loop that has the uh, the hopping belts dropping the items into the induction smelts. I think that's going to be our easiest way of distributing the ores around. We could potentially use like an array of hoppers, but I think that would be um, a little unnecessary. So I think we'll try with, uh, with the conveyor belt setup and uh, see if we can make that work. And eight copper gears and eight invar gears later, we can make hopefully four more induction smelters and four more pulverizers. Nice. Okay, so now that we have those, let's take our belts and let's see if we can't upgrade, I guess, five of these to hopping belts. I don't think we have enough wooden hoppers for that, but that is not a problem. We did make a bunch of chests in a previous episode, so getting a, uh, a bunch of hoppers should not be a problem. We'll take five of those, and I guess we want ten of these, actually, now that I think about it. Let me make um, five more of these wooden hoppers here and like i said i think we're going to try and create some kind of loop obviously the loop really only works if we are processing the ores faster than they're coming in otherwise we're going to end up with a, uh, a conveyor belt loop that just has far too many ores on it but essentially let me get rid of the hopper here and oh gosh i forgot how many ores were inside of that we'll put all those back into here for now and temporarily we can uh, i thought we could use the carry-on mod here but i guess in this pack it seems like carry-on only really works for storage that is fine let's move some of these and essentially what i'm thinking is that if we rotate this we could potentially do one two three four five like that that is nice and centered we can then do the same thing over here we'll get rid of you and for now at least we'll get rid of you as well we'll then rotate this maybe to face inwards like that and we'll do the exact same thing here we'll go two three four and five and then from there, we want to create a loop with the dropping conveyor belts on the top. So those are going to go like this, uh, at least until we get a, a better way to distribute items. Those are going to go, and then we're going to just go loop around. So I want the next belt to go ideally that way. We can rotate it with the crescent hammer, and then we want these to kind of go forward like this. And I think what we'll do, just to make sure it kind of doesn't break completely, is we'll have, uh, whoops, that's not the right way like this, we'll have everything, I think, go into this chest still. So we'll move this chest and we'll put it down, ideally right about, hold on, if I put down a few more belts, I can put it exactly where I want it, ideally right about here. No, I'm gonna move that back a little bit <laughs> because that's gonna make it just easier to work with. I think if we put it, maybe back a second one, I'm thinking we need an extractor belt and then we need a belt to receive the goods. So if we put this here, we can then put an extractor belt in front of it. We're going to replace this one. We then want a belt here and a belt here. I think that's right. We're going to rotate this one to face sideways. We're going to get rid of this one. And then we're going to rotate these, of course, to face the right way like that. So the idea is that all of the ores are going to make their way into this chest as they have been doing thus far. They're then going to loop around here, distributing among the induction smelters. To make this work, we are going to need to get uh, eight more of these slot seals to make sure that none of the induction smelters end up with more than one ore in them at any given time. As we saw in the last episode, the slot seals are thankfully not that difficult to make. We do need enough iron plates. I don't know if we have eight iron plates in the system, but there is only one way to find out. Let's go two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We do, fantastic. And then from there, we just need one of our extracting conveyor belts. Nice. So if I put this extracting conveyor belt onto the chest, we should start to see the items moving around. Before we do that, let's put two slot seals into each of these induction smelters. Fantastic. We do, of course, need to get power to these guys as well. And it really depends on how much you want to upgrade them as to how much power they're going to need. For now, I'm gonna take these out. I don't think it's gonna be fast enough. It's, it's definitely not gonna be fast enough because five of these at 20 redstone flux per tick is only 100 redstone flux per tick. So five of these unupgraded is slower than one of these fully upgraded. So we are gonna to have to tweak this a little bit. But uh, just to show the proof of concept here, we're gonna hopefully have a system that looks like this. The items come out, they kind of loop around, and then so long as I actually set this up correctly and make sure that all of these are set to input from the top, we should see the 
ores go into the induction smelters. Nice. And then if all of the induction smelters are full, then the ores are just going to loop back around and go into the chest and more stuff is going to come out. And there should never be too much on the belt so long as we are smelting stuff faster than we're making it. Now, obviously right now, we're not smelting stuff faster than we're making it because we're not powering these induction smelters. And so we're going to need to get more lapidary dynamos. We're also probably going to want to make some more of the integral components, ideally the uh, hardened integral components for every single one of these induction smelters. And if we want to get power from the lapidary dynamos to all of the induction smelters without just having one lapidary dynamo on each induction smelter, we're probably going to want to invest in some flux ducts. These guys right here allow us to transfer power. And I've been told that in the newer versions of thermal expansion, these can actually transfer just an unlimited amount of power, which is pretty crazy if that's true. So if we were to do something like this, we should now be able to drop down the lapidary dynamos just directly onto the flux ducts. And we can always expand this in the future, of course, if we want to add more flux ducts. I think we might as well add at least one more there to, uh, to fully connect things up. And... Another thing that we didn't do last episode that we should definitely do this episode is automate the uh, the sending of lapis to these lapidary dynamos. I think the easiest way for us to do that is going to be to use the export cables from the simple storage network mod. If we go to at simple storage, the mod adds export cables, which export items from the network to the attached inventory. They're super easy to make for network cable and a piston. We apparently do not have any network cable. That is fine. The network cable itself is not particularly difficult to make so long as you have some stone slabs in your system. Boom, boom, and boom. Fantastic. Real quick, let's make one more lapidary dynamo. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take the lapis from our system. We are going to have to run a cable all the way over to here, but that kind of needs to be done anyway to connect all of our uh, current drawers up. And then we're just going to export to this. And I think we're probably going to do that to the bottom of the lapidary dynamos, just because I think it's going to look that little bit nicer. So essentially we're going to break the blocks underneath here. doesn't really matter too much if we lose the smooth stone. We've got tons of the stuff and we're going to go one, two, three, four, and five. And then in each one of these, we just have to put lapis like that. Uh, we only really need to put one lapis in there like that. It doesn't really matter if you put more in, but uh, that is now going to continually export lapis to these lapidary dynamos just as soon as we connect this cable here up to our pre-existing simple storage network. And so for that, I'm probably just gonna dig out from here, kind of around through the middle, and then I'll probably dig this way because we do have some uh, some frame trim there, of course. And uh, actually that's because the same is true here. If we break this, there's uh, oak trim underneath it. The oak trim is necessary because we're currently using that draw controller. And so I guess we're gonna have to maybe come across and then down this side of the oak trim, and then maybe try and go under the oak trim at some point to get around to the network route. All right, so we are basically there over here. If we do this and this, I know it looks horrible right now, but it runs all the way up under here and then connects to our lapidary dynamos. You'll see they're all online because they are all now receiving lapis from the, uh, the simple storage network system. Right now, we're not producing lapis because our pulverizer isn't online, but once we get our pulverizer system online, then we'll be producing infinite lapis, which should be enough to keep these going. And uh, I also went ahead and connected up uh, this here. It doesn't look great. I probably will move this at some point in the not so distant future. But uh, for now, this is connected up. And so we do have access to the clay, the ground, the sand and the gravel via our simple storage network, which is going to be helpful later in the episode when we want to start automating things like the advanced technium, because it's going to allow us to export the blocks of clay uh, from that drawer without having to extract directly from that drawer, which is nice. So I'm going to fill this in and I'm also going to go ahead and craft up some more of those. I've got so many ores here. Uh, I'm going to craft up some more of the integral components to allow us to make these all faster. And then we'll probably also get a few more hoppers, if not a few more rapid hoppers. The rapid hoppers do require technium. We do have a fair bit of technium now, but uh, we'll go ahead and just put down a few more hoppers underneath here, feeding them all around into this draw controller. We do also need to put a few more drawers down. I think Appetite here is one of those that uh, is backing up that we do need to uh, to take care of. I guess I didn't need to make one extra lapidary dynamo, but that's fine. We've got uh, obviously five pulverizers over here that also need power. And so, uh, yeah, let's go get more integral components. Let's get more lapidary dynamos. I'm going to put five more down over on this side and we'll hook them up in exactly the same way as we've hooked up the other side. And I'm basically going to duplicate 
the pre-existing uh, kind of loop setup over on this side as well to allow this to uh, to loop and we also do need to set up a system that allows the ores to actually get into that chest because right now they are just uh, sitting here and, uh, and kind of spewing a bit which is not ideal all right so not too long later and i think we have a system that kind of works here i have adjusted the conveyor belts coming down so that they now feed into the chest i've also moved the uh, the gold chest and the iron chest there to the center and i've gotten rid of some of the excess belts we had kind of two on the end here and here and i realized that if we just turn one of these uh, dropping conveyor belts sideways on each end that we could just create a much smaller loop that i just think looks a little nicer so now all the ores come down they go into here right now of course the extracting conveyor belts are not facing the right way so the ores are not going to where they need to go that is because although we have i think basically everything set up here all of our machines have got hardened integral components in them all of them have one flux linkage amplifier so they're all using 80 redstone flux per tick we also have one integral component in each of our lapidary dynamos so that they also can make 80 redstone flux per tick the only thing i didn't set up is i didn't put down the hoppers to bring all the items into our system the reason i didn't do that is that somebody in the twitch chat made a pretty good suggestion and that is that much like we're doing currently with the export cables from the simple storage mod there are also you guessed it, import cables. And the import cables are going to make this just much cleaner for us and are going to get rid of our current reliance on trim and uh, and the, the draw controller slave as well. So if we just make 12 of these, we can put these down. We can also in the future make speed and stack upgrades for these pipes to import or export faster should we need them. And so basically we're going to go one, two, three, four, and then eventually five, and then we'll also do one, two, three, four, and then eventually five. The reason I say eventually five, I do want to build a little platform beneath here because I do want to get these rapid hoppers back. They are a little expensive with the amount of technium they require. And so if we just do this and then on the other side, we could do the exact same thing. That's going to allow us to just pick these up without them uh, falling into the void, which is going to be nice. And once we've got those, we can go boom and boom. And then it's just a case of hooking that up to the main line which i might just do actually by kind of breaking the center back block here like that and uh, if we just run one network cable there which i'm gonna have to go get out of the system that should allow us to connect up the importers and then unlike with the exporters you don't have to filter on the importers you can make a, um, a filtered version of the import cable if you do want to import specific items but for us we just want to import anything that is produced either by the induction smelters or by the pulverizers and so if we uh, check over in here this is full of stuff and if we do that that should connect things up and it should hopefully start to pull that stuff in let me just quickly check that that is connected it is indeed oh but of course i do need to set the bottom of these machines here to output and then we should start to see hopefully some stuff getting pulled in so long as there is draw space for it it is nice this is getting pulled in at least over here the silver is not getting pulled in which kind of leads me to believe that there's a potential that we are maybe full up on silver we're not full up on silver we might be full up on something else or it's possible that there's something that we don't have a draw for i think we have a draw for lead silver and rich slag though so i feel like that should be getting pulled in although for whatever reason that's not connecting let me get rid of that and then put it back on again hold on let me <laughs> let me try break and replace it maybe there we go. Okay, that is now working. Not quite sure why that didn't connect the first time. Over here, these are also not connected, but let's quickly just set these to output to the bottom. And the same thing should happen over here as well. And so now, hopefully, we have a system that is fast enough to keep up with production. If it's not, it should just be a case of producing either more flux linkage amplifiers for the machine alongside some of the uh, the dynamo augments i forget the name of the dynamo augment every time it is the auxiliary reaction chamber uh, we can make this as well with the signalum and the uh, hardened glass to make the lapidary dynamos produce more power if that becomes necessary for now though i'm hopeful that this should be good enough and uh, and should keep things going it does appear that for whatever reason stuff isn't going in here it looks like the items kind of pass by this uh, this first belt in a, in a in a weird way which is odd in that case we might have to add in like an extra belt again around the side we are missing an inventory seal on the end here that is true i thought i made enough but i guess we didn't let me go get one more of those and then uh, before we do that actually let's just go ahead and do this 
because that should start pulling all of our ores out. Uh, the ore chest is, is even fuller than everything else, and uh, it should hopefully start bringing everything in and start pulverizing all those down. Of course, we also do need to make sure that we break this and put another network cable there to make sure all of that is hooked up and ready to, uh, to import. All right, and I think, finally, we are good to go here. I think we're actually, for the first time, like, losing ores in a good way. We do have a slight problem. That slight problem is that I think we are going to soon fill up some of our drawers. Between streams, coal was very full. Yeah, I think we're basically full on coal. And uh, we are losing lapis currently, but I think that's just because we uh, set up the lapidary dynamos before we brought lapis back online. What we can do here, we're also full on redstone now as well, which is uh, surprising. Uh, what we can do though is we can make upgrades to store more stuff. Specifically, the gold upgrades I think are going to be a good choice for us here just because we have so much gold coming in. To make them, we need a upgrade template, which is just sticks around a storage drawer. And I believe the best storage drawer for us to use for this is the uh, the two by two storage drawer because you get just more storage drawers when you craft that. And then we can do this. We can make a bunch of these and then we can make a couple of these gold upgrades. In the future, we can also look at getting a void upgrade. The void upgrade will delete any items that are pumped into the drawer that go over the max amount so that we don't get any spewage. The only trouble is it requires obsidian and we haven't yet got the uh, capacity to make obsidian. So for the time being, I'm going to put an upgrade into each of the, uh, the drawers that we're getting a lot from, lapis, coal, and, and redstone. I will probably also put some in oak as well because oak is full maybe apples i think we'll get those and then in the future we can look at adding stuff to like um silver as well because silver is filling up quite quick as is aluminum but we'll, we'll keep an eye on those we can always add more in the future but this finally is working uh, it is going into this induction smell so i'm not quite sure why it wasn't initially but basically all of these are getting filled up we do pick up items when we walk past somebody in the twitch chat suggested something that i've not tried before and that is if we type in belt uh, these guys right here, these are kind of dropping conveyor belts with covers. To make these, we do need some steel scaffolding, which should be makeable. We need some more steel rods. And in fact, speaking of steel, uh, I could do with getting some more cooking in the uh, the blanks furnace just so we have it ready to go. But if we do this, and then if we make maybe a few more of these, just because they really only cost wooden hoppers, let's get five of these, and then let's make five of those. And then if we upgrade those to the steel scaffolding covered versions, I wonder if that prevents the items, like, prevents us picking up the items. If it does, that could be quite useful. If it doesn't, that wouldn't be very useful. So I'm essentially thinking that if we do this, it looks like that's going to stop us picking them up, which would be perfect, because I don't really want my inventory to be filled up with, you know, redstone, coal, lapis, tin, gold, silver, aluminum, iron, lead, nickel, or every time I walk past this. So if we can just cover these up to prevent that spillage from happening, that would be fantastic. So the Twitch chat has also just pointed out that you can actually just right click the steel scaffolding directly onto the belts and it just covers them up. You don't have to make new belts. Also, even these belts that kind of face the wrong way, it looks like the frame would still let you pick them up. You can't pick items up here, which is, is quite useful. I do have one belt that's just kind of looping around here, which um, is not ideal. <laughs> but thankfully, we can just kind of do this and this. I don't know if we can do that. We totally can. Nice. And so by doing this, we basically prevent ourselves from picking up any ores here. You'll notice I did just pick an ore up. That's because we have these belts here. Although I guess as crazy as that looks, that looks so bad. <laughs> But it does work. If we put uh, steel scaffolding on basically all of these, that's going to prevent us from uh, from picking any of this stuff up, which I think is ideal because we really don't want to be picking up just like random ores every time that we walk past. So let me quickly throw one down like here. And I think that should be good. I don't think we're going to pick up anything here anymore. And I don't think we're at risk of picking any of these ores up, no matter how close we get. So we'll just kind of go around and do the same over here. Fill those in, put that one there. And then we might need one there. Although to be fair, I don't know if that's strictly necessary i don't think we're going to pick up an ore from there unless we like really jump for it so i think this should be fine and should be processing all of our stuff and uh, if we look in here you'll see that we are slowly but surely clearing the backlog and so eventually i think we should get to a point you'll see here we're also clearing the backlog quite nicely we should get to a point where there are kind of no ores in here and the ores are just kind of coming in slowly but surely you'll see the number there is going down quite nicely and this is all working cool so now that that is taken care of you are full up. Is that a problem with the cable connection? It is. For some reason, some of these just do not want to connect at all. Let me try breaking and replacing that. 
I don't know if there's a wrench from simple storage networks that could help us here to pick those up faster. But uh, if we do that again, that should hopefully start pulling all of the stuff in. Fantastic. And then we can uh, just put this back down. And that's all good to go. And then quick uh, refresh there to get rid of everything. So now that that is uh, taken care of, let's look at automating the basic technium. So for this, we need to use the auto advanced crafting table, which we do have over here. And I'm going to move this up to the, uh, the new platform because I think we're going to need space for it. Now, one cool thing that we can do, as we saw before, the way this works, you can uh, place this down, you can put a hopper beneath it to pull out, and you can put a chest above it that has all of the required items to make the craft. So unfortunately, these don't save their crafts, but that's fine, we can do that again. Uh, but we can basically lock this crafting table to this craft, and then if we have an inventory above the crafting table that has all of the items, it will pull those items down into the crafting table and craft the ingots. So what I think I'm gonna do here is I think I'm gonna make a storage drawer for the Technium. Ideally, we want the storage drawer to look like our other storage drawers. So for that, we're gonna use polished smooth stone along with the uh, dark oak on the trim, which is here. And we'll take a few of these, I guess, might as well. We could do with putting one down uh, where the carrots are. But essentially what we're gonna do up here, we're gonna have, I guess, let me get a, oh, we got speedy hoppers, we're fine. So we'll take our speedy hoppers, even though the regular hoppers will probably do the trick. We're not gonna make too many of these. But one thing I do want to get, actually, before we head over there, is I would love to get a storage downgrade. So we just made the storage upgrades. The storage downgrades do the same thing, but they reduce the amount of storage in a storage drawer. The reason we want to do this is that I don't think we really want to have more than a stack of basic technium or even advanced technium on hand at any given time. What that's going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to use, you know, a bunch of copper, a bunch of tin, a bunch of coal coke, a bunch of all of the stuff required to make basic technium to make a stack of basic technium, but we're not going to fully deplete all of our resources making infinite basic technium because I don't think making infinite basic technium is a great idea. So I think we'll put it here like this and we'll do something like this and like this. The reason I'm putting it here is that going forward, we've got quite a lot of different tiers of technium that we need to produce. And my thought process is that uh, kind of directly opposite this right about here, we could do the exact same with advanced technium. We could have like another crafting table here that produces advanced technium, and it gives us some space behind the crafting table to do any kind of uh, processing that we need to do, right? And if we put a storage downgrade in here, like so, and uh, if we lock this draw to technium, we'll put the technium in later, that's now going to allow us to produce exactly a stack and then kind of back up on everything else until we use the technium, at which point it'll make more. Now, before we use the chest above here to store all of the items, but that's not gonna really work with basic technium because if we put a chest down and we start exporting clay to it, it's just going to fill up with clay, right? Because we've got so much clay and we don't have, for example, that much bronze. And so I think a good idea here, the hopper will also fill up chat. Yes, that is true. People are asking if this hopper will fill up. The hopper will fill up. We could probably do with swapping this out for a wooden hopper actually, because the wooden hopper only holds one stack of ingots. We could also do this though as well, uh, because these bricks are never gonna go into the drawer, they kind of limit the uh, the backlog. So the backlog will actually be effectively three stacks of basic technium, because we're gonna have one stack in here, one stack in here, and then one stack in here of basic technium, all backed up, ready to go. So we're effectively doing a three stack backup, but that's still better than doing um, a 64 stack backup plus these two, like effectively a 66 stack backup, right? That would be way too much basic technium, and we'll just deplete all of our resources way too fast. Basically though, what I was about to say, instead of having a chest on top of this advanced auto crafting table, we can actually put a mini storage drawer system. If we put a two by two drawer on top of there, we can start putting some of the resources in. Unfortunately, the basic technium here does require more than four resources. It requires five. We've got the bronze, the smooth stone, the clay, the treated wood, the coal coke, and the lapis. Six actually, if uh, my math is correct there. And so, what I'm thinking here is if we uh, grab some tech books, we can probably just buy another draw controller from the store, which is actually under basic research, right? The draw controller is here. We still can't craft these yet, unfortunately. Uh, we need nether quartz and we don't have access to that. But if we do this, and then if we grab some more two by two draws, specifically, I would like to get some framed two by two draws. These ones right here. That's going to allow us to once again, frame these in the way that we like with the polished smooth stone and the dark oak like so, we'll take two of those and we'll also take that one tech name as well, just to uh, set the draw to where it needs to be. And then we can essentially put the draw controller directly on top of the advanced auto crafting table and it is going to pull 
from these two drawers here and here. And in these two drawers, we're gonna put all the stuff we need. So we're gonna lock both of these, of course, boom and boom. And then we'll have, you know, one drawer space for lamp -its. We'll have one for clay, we'll have one for treated wood, one for cold cook, we'll have one for uh, clay and one for bronze. And that's gonna then allow this to access everything. We'll put this in here as well, fantastic. And I'll probably get two more storage downgrades here to limit the amount of stuff that's stored in those drawers. Because again, we don't want all of our lapis sent over to our, those drawers or all of our clay sent over to those drawers. We want most of our lapis and clay to be available to the main system, but we, uh, we do want some available for making the Technium. So we'll take two storage downgrades and we'll throw those in over there. I guess while we're here, we could also do with getting the export cables again. Do I have some left? I do indeed, and two is actually kind of perfect. Boom, and boom, we'll put those there. And then we'll also do boom and boom. Nice, okay. So some of these are easier than others, of course. Lapis and clay we can just export because we're already producing those automatically thanks to the pre-existing systems that we have. Some of these are gonna be a bit trickier though. For example, we don't currently have automation set up for cold coke. Um, our cold coven is over there, it is working. And we also don't have automation for treated wood either, but that is something we do need to set up. So if we take one of each of these over in here, we can just say lapis and clay, and that's gonna export both of those to this drawer. Perfect. As for the other stuff here, smooth stone is also one that we can just export. Actually, we can go grab that and that's gonna be good to go. I think we should probably grab an extra induction smelter, and we can probably use that to make the bronze. Up until now, we've been making our bronze in the alloy kiln, uh, but the induction smelter, as well as being able to smelt our ores into ingots, can also smelt alloys together. So for that, we need a blast furnace. We also need two more uh, invar gears. That's not gonna be a problem. We'll take some of the invar and get that uh, transferred over. And then we'll basically just put this over, I think, by that setup, and we'll just have the exporter, so we'll get some more export cables. Let me bookmark this. We'll get some more export cables. We'll have the export cable export copper and tin to the induction smelter. That's gonna make bronze, and then we'll have the bronze go into the drawers. In fact, one thing I did find out between streams, if we go to at simple storage, we can in fact get these stock upgrades. These are kind of cool in that they allow you to limit the number of items that the exporter exports. And so with these, we actually wouldn't need the storage downgrades and we could do this to fully maximize efficiency if we wanted to. Essentially, we could put this in here and you'll notice before that we could increase the number in the exporter here. That's what this is for. When you put in the stock upgrade, you're basically telling this export cable to make sure that only the amount listed here, so in this case, one of each, is in this drawer. And if that number falls below the number in here, in this case, one, then it will send more. So with the stock upgrade in, this will send one lapis and one clay. And then only when the lapis and clay amount hits zero, will it send more lapis and clay. And so utilizing those stock upgrades is going to allow us to kind of maximize efficiency on the frame drawers, but also on the induction smelter as well. So I'll figure out where I want to put the induction smelter because we're also going to have to get power over to here as well, which um, is also going to be a pain. Chad does make a good point here. Two good points being made. One is that we could just put one exporter on the draw controller. The second that might be an even better suggestion is that we might just be able to export directly to the table here. And if we can export directly to the table, that would get away entirely with the need for the, uh, the draw controller. I do think this looks kind of cool, but it would be more efficient if we could just export to the crafter. So we'll give that a try. We'll see if that does work. I have no reason really to, like, assume it wouldn't. The thing we need to work on really though is getting the uh, cold cook and the treated wood automated. Everything else shouldn't be too difficult. We do also kind of have to decide whether or not we're gonna have the bronze made up there or if we're gonna try and make it down here somewhere. Back over here, boom, there is our induction smelter once we got some more gears. So we could put the induction smelter up there somewhere, but if we're gonna export all of the items anyway, we could kind of put the induction smelter wherever we like. The tricky thing is that we don't really have excess power anywhere outside of our, uh, outside of our water wheel, which is not really what I would call excess power. And given that we have to run a cable up to there anyway, I feel like at the same time, we could also just get another uh, lapidary dynamo and export some more lapis up to the top. You'll see we're already backing up on lapis tremendously. We're up at 7,000 lapis now. So we are producing way more lapis than we're using for our uh, current power production. I'm also thinking that it's probably not gonna be a terrible idea to move the coke oven as well. I think I'm gonna use the coke oven and set up the automation for that over behind the, uh, the table. Speaking of the coke oven, 
we do want to get, I think, an assembler. So I'm going to take the coke oven. Right now, the coke oven is uh, making coke coke. And uh, over here, I do want to start making some steel, just in case we need some at uh, some point today. But uh, I'm going to take the coke oven. I'm also going to take, of course, the, uh, the trash can and the pump. And then we're going to look at making the multi-block assembler from immersive engineering and using that to produce uh, treated wood for us. We are also going to need to grab our other auto crafting table because we do also need to craft oak logs into oak planks. Thankfully, we did make that uh, other auto crafting table. It is in this back corner, actually, Isaac. I completely forgot. It is over here. This is going to allow us to produce the, uh, the oak planks automatically. In fact, we might be able to make this work somewhat easily. I'm thinking about setting like it up over here somewhere. The annoying part is that we do need a hopper for it. I'm kind of thinking that if I grab a draw, we should then be able to do something like this, where we have a hopper, let's say, and we can even make it, a, eh, we probably don't need a fast hopper. Let's do a normal hopper like this. We can put the table down like this, and then I'm basically thinking of moving the, uh, the oak logs here over to the top of this. Those should basically always be full. We do need to get some more of the, uh, the good old oak trim to kind of reconnect that back to the main draw system. If we do this and this, that's now connected up. That should produce, if we do this and uh, left click to save the recipe. Let me quickly turn that off and try that one more time. We'll put you in, shift left click up here. That should now be locked. It is not, try it again, shift left click. It is still not locked, shift left click and then make it maybe. Still not locked, hold on, let me, uh, we'll get that chat. It looked like it was locked, shift left click. Am I losing my mind? You go in. It says four oak planks. Oh, do I need to click it? I need to click it. Okay, that's my bad. I'm, I'm a fool. But now, if we turn that on, that's going to make planks. And uh, if we quickly empty out the appetite here, uh, we do need another drawer for the appetite, but that is fine. We can do this and we can put it right here. We can then put the appetite in. Fantastic. And we can put this here just as soon as we grab some planks. We'll do this and we'll do this. Again, we can block this off like that to uh, prevent... Uh, too many planks going in there. We can then lock this drawer, lock this drawer, and now our system has access to logs. We also have a crafting table here that's going to keep crafting oak planks for us, and uh, down here we basically have unlimited oak planks, so going forward we don't have to keep manually crafting them, which is great, and of course up on our main level over there, let me take some uh, smooth stone as well, we can just tell the exporter to export the oak planks uh, to the assembler, which is then going to make it into treated planks, and we can also, of course, use our current exporter to export the uh, smooth stone. I am being told by a member of the Twitch chat that uh, if we want to use the export cable here, we need to export to the top of the crafting table, like that, as opposed to to the side. Uh, so in here, we're just going to export things like stone, and uh, we'll come back to this because we need to export basically everything, but uh, for now, we can do uh, clear as well, like this, and lapis. And I'm going to put the uh, the stack limiting upgrade in there. Although we will probably have to take that out because of the way the recipe is set up. We need four coal coke in here. And we need, you know, four smooth stone, four clay, eight bronze. Because we need multiple of all of these, if we just said, you know, send eight bronze, it would probably put all eight bronze in one slot, which is not ideal. And at that point, uh, we'd need to get, you know, eight stacks of bronze before the craft started to work, which might be the case anyway, but that's fine. Let's go see if we can't make this multi-block assembler because i don't think it is too difficult to make let's also clear our inventory out just a little bit we've got a lot of stuff in here that we don't need to be carrying around with us that coke brick though is one of the things i do want to have with me so the multi-block assembler is another machine from immersive engineering and i believe it's under heavy machinery and assembler for this we need two redstone engineering blocks two light engineering blocks nine iron sheet metal six steel scaffolding six iron sheet metal slabs and two conveyor belts we should already have a few engineering blocks. We actually have both the redstone and the light engineering blocks. That is perfect. Iron sheet metal, steel scaffolding, iron sheet metal slabs, and conveyor belts. The conveyor belts we also have. Fantastic. The steel scaffolding we do not have, but I'm almost certain we can make some. Although I did just look at our steel and we definitely don't have enough, so that's fine. Uh, do we have enough iron plates to make some iron sheet metal? We do, and in fact, we already have a little bit of iron sheet metal, which is nice. Six, I think, is the perfect amount. And I think nine might also be the perfect amount. Let me check. It is fantastic. So we just need the six steel scaffolding. Thankfully, Isaac of the past did put some iron into the blast furnace. Back over here. Boom. And hopefully... Boom, it's a six, nice. And that should be everything 
for the assembler. It is cool. So we're going to go build this up here. We're also going to put down our coke brick as well. Now that we have coal coming in automatically, we should just be able to uh, put down an export cable, export the coal directly to the coke oven to make the coal coke. And then from there, we're going to extract the coal coke, obviously, to uh, a drawer of its own and then eventually to the system here. And we can also take the creosote from here as well and, of course, use that in the production of treated wood. So if we do something like this, and of course, build the standard three by three cube for the coke oven, uh, ideally without this block here, we can then do something like this. Fantastic. And then I'm going to build the assembler kind of right here. So if we hit play and then pause, the, um, oh, there we go. That is paused. It's, uh, it's still a little small, but I think we can manage here. So let me hit uh, stop again, just because I want to make sure we get the right direction here. So blue is in and orange is out. So we want the blue side on the left side, orange side on the right side. So uh, let's pause it here and we'll go to the bottom level. So we want steel scaffolding down either side like that uh, in the middle it looks like it is this this and this with the light engineering block in the center we then do this with steel sheet metal here and here and then at the top level it looks like we've got oh i see that's an odd like the way they've put it there it looks a lot but uh, i believe what they've done is they've put down uh, three half slams on each side and then they put down three full ones in the center like that and then uh, i assume we have conveyor belts running through the middle and i guess in our case we want those going this way it might be the case that um it doesn't matter which way you build it it looks like it doesn't matter which way you build it i imagine it matters which way you put the conveyor belts as to which is the input and which is the output in terms of assembling this we need to hammer on one of the conveyor belts that is fine let's do this and boom we got it right we have input there output there you'll see the direction is pointing that way so here we want to pump out of the coke oven and so for that we should be able to do this and then we're gonna have to get some pipes but essentially we're gonna pipe directly into this guy i actually don't know i assume that we can pipe in both fluids like there is a fluid tank and an item section i'm hopeful that we can uh, pump both of those in I assume you pump into the bottom and I assume that the items go in here where the belt looks to be. So I assume that I can also kind of just put an exporter there and have that work. And then we can also just kind of run the pipe down here. We are going to want to have a fluid trash can overflow because eventually we're going to hit a point where we're kind of fully backed up on technium and we don't want to back up our cold coke production if we have too much creosote. And so what we want to do here is get yet more pipes. Yet more pipes is going to require yet more iron plates. Let me go quickly grab a stack of those and a few more fluid pipes later. We should be able to set this. Uh, again, no shift right clicking there. We're gonna set it to output on this side and then we're gonna run the pipe down like this into here. Obviously, I do not want this pipe here. This can uh, go away and uh, we can also, I don't think it's necessary. I don't think you can pump Creos up back into the coke oven, but uh, you can right click with the hammer to uh, disconnect those there just to make it look that little bit nicer and then I believe the way that this works is that the pipes from immersive engineering should, if I'm not mistaken, send the fluid to the nearest inventory first. So one, two, three, four, five pipes takes it to the assembler. If we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pipes and put the fluid trash can there, that should essentially send all of the creosote to the assembler. And then only when the assembler is full, should it then send excess creosote to the fluid trash can. I think that's how that works. Just to play it safe, I'm going to move this. I'm going to put it like here, like that, because that way it's kind of like a, it, it creates a junction there where I think it's going to go in there first. So I think this should be good. And so now all we should need to do is export the coal to here. So for that, of course, we're going to use an export cable. Let me put that down somewhere. Uh, we could put this on the bottom potentially, but we'll probably put it like right about here uh, and have that export in. For now, let me go grab some coal because of course we have to run cabling all the way up to here to get all of this online. But uh, if I quickly grab some coal, we can kind of test to see if this works. We also are going to have to export some wood as well, of course, some planks to the, uh, the actual multi-block assembler itself. But I think all of this should be pretty much good to go. So boom, we'll throw the coal in there. We'll see if that works. Over here, uh, we're going to put the wood in as if it was uh, produced. And then I think all we need to do is we do need to get a bucket of creosote. So what I might do is uh, kind of temporarily turn that off so that we can pull the creosote out. 
this did work though the creosote is in there i'm going to temporarily put this here and uh we need to kind of teach this a recipe so we'll do this and then as soon as we have one bucket worth of creosote we can then pull that out into this bucket fantastic at which point we can put that here to teach it how to make treated wood and now once we get this connected up you are going to export regular old oak planks like that and keep them in here again this is one of those situations where the stock card would be useful because we don't really want all of our planks sitting in here even though i don't think that's gonna be a problem i think we could fill this up with planks and it would be fine but uh, either way this has a thousand buckets so let's pull that out or a thousand millibuckets i should uh, i should say and hopefully this is gonna work of course once it gets power so we need to power it by the top that should be fine though because we need to also power our induction smelter and so as janky as it might look what i might end up doing here is putting a lapidary dynamo like this putting the induction smelter down somewhere around here where exactly i put that is a good question because we need to uh we need to export i might put it here and then i might kind of input to the top and output to the side to like a draw here potentially that we're then going to pull from we also want to have like a draw here for the treated wood as well and that should be all good we can then also, of course, put down an exporter here to export the lapis to the lapidary dynamo. And then the uh, the final cable that I think we need to put down is on the top of that induction smelter. Right about here so that we can export the copper and the tin. And I think that's all going to be good to go. So real quick, let me go and get a bunch of network cable. And let's run it all the way over here and try and get all of this stuff hooked up to see if any of this actually works all right so i've run a cable you'll see i've got some uh, kind of temporary scaffolding here that i've been using but i've run it from the uh, the area where we're connecting up kind of over there under this platform up under the stairs it then runs across and then under here all the way along under here and then all the way along under here so everything should be connected up let me redo this because it seems like sometimes it breaks when you um if you don't like reconnect it uh, i am gonna have to go get some coal for that but that's fine up here planks are being exported which is good it does seem like it's just exporting a continuous amount of planks which is not how i thought this worked but it's also fine because of the fact that we are basically producing infinite wood so that's not really a problem uh, so let me get lapis and let's put the lapis in here that should start filling up our lapidary dynamo and that should start crafting the treated wood hopefully if there's power for it and uh, that treated wood should get sent around to here it does indeed fantastic uh, we can lock that and to be honest we could also potentially put a downgrade on that as well we probably don't need infinite treated wood being made again we don't want all of our logs being turned into planks to all be turned into treated wood so i think a, um, a downgrade would work let me grab some coal from here and a downgrade as well although i probably could have taken one of the downgrades out of the uh, other drawers that we kind of no longer need boom downgrade applied and then over here let's export that coal cook that keeps disconnecting i assume that's not that's not ideal i don't know if that's because it's trying to connect to the multi-block or what if it is just the coke oven that's causing the problem we could potentially export to like a chest that feeds into a hopper that goes to the coke oven because that might also work better uh, over here this is working just fine this did disconnect again i don't know what's causing the disconnections there let me put that back there and that back there maybe that will keep going are you still connected back here you're still connected okay cool i should also go check my other my oil processing which i think is still online uh over here we do need to export copper and tin okay so back up here the stock upgrade isn't working as i expected on here let me see if it works how i expect up here so basically what i'm thinking here is if i take this and i say you keep one tin and three copper with the stock upgrade i'm hopeful that that should export no more than three copper yeah it totally does maybe the um the pipe can't read the assembler but it can read the induction smelter here this means that we don't need a slot seal because we're going to tell this to keep exactly one tin and three copper which means it's going to make exactly four bronze and then only once that four bronze has been made and exported to the right hand side like that only then is it going to get more copper and more tin and again a storage downgrade here would be ideal to make sure that we don't spend all of our copper and all of our tin making bronze and the idea here by the way is just going to be to use some link cable to connect these to the simple storage network so we'll do that and then we'll just run you kind of down not like that like this down around and into the ground cool 
so they should now be connected up. Those are both like accessible by the system. And so over here, we should be able to start exporting things if this exporting actually works. It kind of looks like it doesn't work. Although that might just be because we've not locked a recipe in. That's probably like actually definitely the case. So I think we almost have everything now, right? We've got Lampis, we've got Smooth Stone. I am gonna need more Smooth Stone because I actually need to set the recipe up. But um, let me get everything else ready here. So Lampis goes there. We then have Clay in the top, bottom, left, and right slot. Fantastic. We then have Bronze. Eight in total, going here, 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 and here. Fantastic. Uh, we do also need a drawer, actually, for the cold cook. That is my bad. I'm going to have to go craft up another one of these uh, custom doors, because I do want them all to look the same, and uh, we'll get, like, a, uh, a setup for that so that we can actually start storing that somewhere. And again, we'll connect that up with link cable. We need four treated wood. So it's going to go, I think, like this. Let me check, though, because I always get the treated wood and the uh, cold cook the wrong way around. Nope, this is perfect. So now we just need the cold cook and the smooth stone and we should be good to go. So let me quickly grab one more draw as well as uh, enough smooth stone to kind of kick things off here. So I think as awkward as it's gonna be, I think I'm gonna use a hopper to extract from the coke oven just because if we use a uh, conveyor belt extractor, which is really our only other choice at the minute, things are gonna start spewing everywhere. This is really one of those situations where we're eventually gonna wanna put a void upgrade on this to make sure that we don't stop the creosote production. Because just like we don't want the creosote production backing up the cold coke production, we also don't want the cold coke production backing up the creosote production. Although I think the uh, creosote is much more likely to stop the cold coke than the cold coke is to stop the creosote. Either way, let us get another link cable. And we can actually just put this here in the, the line with the rest of them. And so that is now ready to go. I also foolishly didn't grab any smooth stone. <laughs> um, chat didn't remind me that I need to turn the auto crafting off to make sure that we can actually complete the craft here. But uh, let me go and grab that uh, elusive smooth stone. And at that point, chat, we should be basically good to go here. I think we have everything we need. Uh, we just need to tell the exporter to export everything, which I'm gonna do before I put the items in and uh, before we lock everything in the crafting table. Worst case scenario, we might have to use the draw controller here, but I think we should be fine. So, Colcock, we want smooth stone, clay, lapis, we want bronze, and treated wood. Those are the six items that we want to export basically continuously to this table. In here, we just need to do one, two, three, four, then shift left click and then select. And so now that is ready to go and hopefully ready to be exported into. If I take this out, does it export more stuff? The answer would appear to be no. And so unfortunately it looks like this doesn't work. You can't export directly into the advanced auto crafting table. That is fine though. It just means we're gonna have to move this back by one to here and replace down that uh, that draw controller. Uh, do we still have the draw controller? The answer would appear to be no. Let me quickly go grab that. Boom, there's the draw controller. Here I am gonna use another stock upgrade that I just made and we're gonna try and limit things here because I did take the draw downgrades out of here. That should be fine because we basically, you'll see it's already pulled the lapis and stuff, which is good, but um, we don't want too much in here. In fact, I think limiting it to one of each thing is, is probably gonna do the job just fine. So we'll say one treated plank because the treated plank's gonna get sent and then uh, pulled down straight away. So it'll just send another one as when it needs to. Uh, one bronze is completely fine. Uh, we can then do one coal cook like this, along with one clay like this, and then a smooth stone, which we already have, like this, and finally a lapis as well, like this. And uh, we don't want 11 lapis, we want ideally just one lapis. Uh, throwing the lapis away is a little bit of a waste, but we've got loads of the stuff, so I think that is probably fine. And then we just need to make sure that all of the uh, things have a place to go. So treated wood, cold coke, and bronze. And I think we're good to go, chat. I think we have now fully automated this system. Of course, uh, we could speed this up with some speed upgrades. How expensive are the speed upgrades? They're actually surprisingly cheap. Let me go and um, quickly grab a couple of those and see if we can't make this a bit faster. It also might have been faster if we didn't set it to export like exactly one item at a time via the, uh, the storage drawer. But uh, real quick, if we get a couple of these, which I think, yeah, we should be able to make. I don't know what the maximum you can put in a stack is. I feel like it might be four, but let me go and check. These go in up here, 
And, oh, you can only put one in each slot. Okay, that's fine. All right, so this is basically, though, good to go. We're exporting all the stuff. Things are going to export. We can turn the uh, auto crafting on now, like so. And this is just going to make for us the basic technium ingots. We've essentially finally automated the production of basic technium. It's not crazy fast, for sure. It looks like... I, I do wonder, if I take the stock upgrade out, does that help it? It looks like it does help it. Yeah. I... I'm going to put the stock upgrade back in temporarily. I'm just going to get another storage downgrade for the storage drawers. I think that is going to do the job just fine. I uh, I, I think the stock upgrade is, is needlessly limiting the speed at which we can work here, which is, is not ideal. Again, I don't know how much it matters massively because of the fact that we're going to back up eventually on, on Technium, and I don't think we need the Technium production to be that fast. But essentially, this is, is now fully automated, which is, is very nice indeed. And so next time, we can kind of do a similar thing with the advanced Technium. If I do that... I think we're good to go. This one should already have a downgrade upgrade in it. It does. Let's do this, and I guess this as well, to uh, to fully speed that up. Yeah, that's moving a lot faster and filling up with stuff. Of course, we do have little bottlenecks like over here. The induction smelter is probably going to be the bottleneck in terms of uh, how much bronze can be made. We could always speed this up if we wanted to, but again, we're already, well, I was going to say we're already halfway there, but we kind of cheated. We put in um, <laughs> 25 to begin with, so uh, not really already halfway there. Did I put lapis in here? I did put lapis in here. Okay, the lapis should get exported soon-ish, assuming we still have enough lapis to, uh, to keep the system going. Doing the same thing with advanced technium really shouldn't be too difficult. We're going to have to move the bottling plant, but getting the lava from where it's at currently over there to the bottling plant automatically shouldn't be too difficult. Making glass automatically is just a case of melting the sand that we already have, so that is going to be completely fine. Then we just have to send the bottles to the bottling plant. Uh, making the aluminum sheet metal should be also pretty easy. We can use the multi-servo press to make plates faster. We just can't use them to make gears just yet, and that's kind of the only thing standing in the way here because we can also use another induction smelter to automate the production of Invar next time. The only thing really that's stopping us from fully automating the production of advanced technium ingots is the steel gears. We can automate steel with an improved blast furnace, which we'll look at making next time. The one thing we can't do, though, currently, is automate steel gears without moving the metal press. And we could move the metal press, but it's currently our only metal press. And I think what might not be a terrible idea is to kind of instead push forward a bit further with thermal expansion and the crystals chapter to try and get the blocks of ruby required to unlock diamonds and emeralds because once we unlock diamonds we can then get the gear working die and that's going to allow us to use the multi-server press with the gear working die to make our gears which is just going to be a much more efficient way of uh, of doing things but yeah this is good and it's going to save us so much time in the future you know crafting bronze and crafting treated wood and getting coal coke and all that stuff and we can just now come and grab this technium and in fact if we really wanted to we could just put a link cable down actually on the bottom of this drawer so kind of right about there like that, that is connected, fantastic. And now back over at our simple storage network interface, we're just gonna have access to that basic technium. So whenever we want to use it, we can just pull it out of the system. We don't have to run all the way back over uh, to there. Um, I do have some water still here between streams. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get rid of this horrible section of cobblestone that we've put down. But uh, yeah, next time we'll come back, we'll push further on through the elite tech quest line we'll do some more thermal we'll get some uh, rubies sapphires and peridot which actually do work as pretty good capstones they bring it down to 50 ticks which is uh, just 2.5 seconds per ore which may or may not be a good idea because if we do that then we're gonna have to upgrade our uh, ore processing system which um, is already a little strained but it is burning through the backlog over here we have managed to basically burn through the backlog on the uh, the coal lapis and redstone side we're getting there on the other ore side things are coming in nice and quick and, uh, and I like it. We're going to have to get some storage upgrades, of course, for a lot of this stuff, because a lot of these are now full. But that is a problem for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Techopolis 2 there.